Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. My name is Jasmine. Camille. My name is Diana. My name is Tommy. By a show of hands, how many of you have ever been sentenced to jail and or prison? Okay. I have two. Today we're going to discuss the behaviors of prisoners in a sociological sense. We're going to cover the behavior of prisoners in American prison systems, the behavior of prisoners in concentration camps, and the behavior of prisoners of war ran by the Japanese Imperial Army. Now let us begin with the behavior of American prisons. Researchers have considered a number of potential risk factors for suicide and self-harm in prisoners populations. Particularly, such behaviors have been linked to a history of sexual and physical abuse, anger problems, lack of communication skills, addictions, gangs, relationships, alteration stresses, which means the family stresses and their self stresses without having self-discipline and stuff. Because it is hard to be away from the people you love and being incarcerated makes it that much more stressful. Depression also plays an important role on prisoners' behavior because they have to learn to uh, adapt in the prison system and they have to get used to living in jail cells like these that's no bigger than your closet, average closet. And when they are being transported from any means of transportation, they are always in one single file line and they are shackled from their ankles and they're shackled connected on their wrists. During the 1960s, there was a heroin epidemic in many urban neighborhoods, and it was followed by the crack cocaine epidemic. These epidemics contributed significantly to prison populations in the late 1990s and 2000s. The behavior of American prisoners during this time was much more than just unacceptable. They began violating, losing respect for security guards, and each other. This resulted to the explosion of violence in American prison systems. Now that we know about the American prisoners, let us move on to the prisoners of concentration camps. They, their behavior was none like the ones of the American prisoners. They had to deal with post-traumatic stress syndrome, which was consistent of flashbacks, nightmares, amnesia, and some of them got too cocky and they were not, they started disobeying their authorities. Because look at the living conditions they were in. They had to sleep side by side and on things that made like chefs that work in a warehouse. So that was very uncomfortable. The ones that didn't, the ones that didn't obey the orders result, resulted in harsh and cruel punishment. Some prisoners, they even strategized to escape because they just couldn't take it no more and they had enough. Few succeeded in escaping, but the ones that were captured were immediately put to death. A semi-structured interview investigated the presence of traumatic syndromes of World War II were interrogated and tortured and they were wounded and the duration of internment and trauma during imprisonment. They also investigated the presence of traumatic or stressful events and all different types of traumatic experiences during and after the war period were summed up and used as a qualitative measure of the extent of trauma. And subjects with partial post-traumatic stress syndrome, which was 16%, had a lifetime diagnosis of full PTSD. These subjects did not differ from others with partial PTSD. With regards to age, duration of imprisonment, number of traumatic experiences, frequency of lifetime major depressions, and questionnaire scores, and other means of collective behavior. And some of the concentration camps were located all throughout Europe, and one country they most had it was the Nazis that was in the German Germany economy. And such places was Munich, Bad talk, Switzerland, France, and just all over what they had. But the main one was in Germany that I am um, speaking about today. Now we know about the concentration camps. Let us go on to the prisoners of war ran by the Japanese Imperial Army. Now this was very harsh and unusual punishment. Because when they did something 
they even just took the prisoners they had and just practiced with them. They would have them just sit there and just either have bayonet practices like cutting off um, fingers, toes, limbs, or anything. And depending on the mood they're in, they would even cut off their heads. And that was very unfair treatment. But there was nothing they could do about it at this time. And the ones that they did that um, they did keep and didn't use as practices and stuff, they kept them in cells like these in concrete cement walls. And the behavior of these prisoners during after their prison sentences, along with the increased attention currently given to psychological abuse, have come attempts to classify the various forms that it takes. Direct practice work with battered women and men who battered help to create this of a broad age of abuse, of abusive behavior was as follows. Neoclassical economics, which was very undesirable because the economy was so culturally diverse and the markets was too. Coercive sexual behavior was when they had the perpetrator, the rapist, and each one of them played a role in relationships. After capture by soldiers, the now defunct Imperial Japanese Army of the Philippines, the prisoner of war were brought to Japan and forced to work at a coal mine in Kyushu, southwestern Japan against their will. Now that we have went over all of the behavior of the prisoners of the American system, the ones in the concentration camps, and the ones of prisoners of war that was ran by the Japanese Imperial Army, which one would you say was the most harshest? Concentration. Concentration. The concentration camp jail because they were forced against their will and that was very <coughs> cruel for the Nazis to do. And another other one would be the, Jap the prisoners of war because you suffer for your country and then you get captured by them, it's like you would be doing it for nothing. And then you get hurt and stuff for somebody else's life. Any more questions? Concerns about what I have discussed today? Okay, thank you for attending my class.